My fellow nerdikins, welcome back to another episode of That's So Nerdy. Today we've got the winning deck profile of the last video, and it's going to be SS2 Sun Gohan. So on the front side of the leader, he does not draw, but when he attacks, you can add one mono blue card from your energy to your hand, and then place one uh, mono blue battle card from your hand into your energy. And then... Uh, his second auto is when a blue skillless battle card is played from your energy, you may flip this card over. If you do, draw two cards and add uh, add cards from your life to your hand until you have six life left. Or you can have the standard awaken of uh, four life and then you get to draw two cards on that one as well. And then when you're awakened, uh, you get a draw on swing now. Uh, you also still do the energy thing as well. And then he has an activate battle of once per turn. You choose one of your blue skillless Saiyan cards with an energy cost of two or less, and it gets 5,000 power for the turn. Um, I've been actually running the engine of this deck behind a bunch of different leaders and just neglecting to try the leader, and I finally tried this leader, and I'm a little upset with myself for sleeping on it for so long because it's actually really fun to play, but we'll get right into the unison package first, of course. We're running four copies of S uh, Super Saiyan Sun Goku Spirit Blue Striker. Um, you don't really use the auto in this deck because I don't have anything that I Spirit Boost with. Um, I do have Tapion in the side deck, but he doesn't really get sighted in all that often, so the auto on this isn't super relevant, but if you are able to proc it off, you get to give one of your Blue Saiyan cards 5,000 power for the turn. And then uh, his plus one, you can add a marker, switch him to rest mode. If you do switch him to rest mode, you play out a, a blue skillless card from your energy with an energy cost of two. And uh, at the end of your turn, you ramp the energy from the top of your deck. And then he also has a minus one that you get to choose one of your opponent's battle cards and return it to their hand. So if they have a pesky blocker on board... <coughs> Excuse me, you can just uh, pop that off because it has no energy specifications, so that also actually works on the uh, token blockers. Um, and then we're running two cop copies of bonus in because it's blue and uh, you kind of have to. There's very few decks that you can get away with not running bonus in in the deck. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Most people know what he does. 20k double strike blocker that restands himself and an energy uh, for his plus zero my, my, uh, marker ability. And then the minus one marker ability bottom decks uh, a battle card. Yeah, pretty, uh, still really, really good. Everybody should know what Bunison does. Um, and then we're running four copies of Tian Shinhan Energy Fortification. Uh, you pretty much will never play this card to the board, so his first auto to draw a card is pretty irrelevant. You're pretty much only ever charging him because of his second auto, that when you charge him, you can pay an energy, and then you can play a blue skillless uh, with an energy cost of two from your energy, and then ramp uh, from the top of your deck. So this is how typically how you're going to be awakening turn two uh, is you'll charge a skillless first turn, char and then charge Tian your second turn, and when you charge him, you'll tap your skillless, and then, uh, your skillless will play out, and then you ramp from the top of your deck. Really good, um, and then we're also running three copies of the Vegeta Energy Fortification. He does the, uh, his second auto is the same, or, well, he only has one auto, I should say. His auto is the same as Tien, that if you play him into the energy, you can tap an energy and play out a skillless. But he is also a, uh, a hard negate, uh, which does come up from time to time, so it's kind of handy to have him, but most of the time you're just going to be charging him. And then... Super combo for the deck since we are ramping cards and we want to be able to pull cards back with something other than just our leader skill. We are playing Zeno, um, really good for this deck. 
uh, live when you're at five or less life and you get to pull a card back from your energy and place one down in your energy. All right, so that's the last of our one drops. And now we'll move into the skillless package. We are running four of the Gohans. And then we are running four of the chunks. Just because you always, uh, all of your best cards in this deck turn on when you have a skillless on board. So you want to be able to have the ability to get a skillless on board whenever you need it. And speaking of needing to have a skillless on board, um, we're playing three copies of Sun Gohan Unbelievable Might. He's a 15k blocker. Uh, he bottom when he when you play him, he bottom decks a battle card, ignoring barrier with an energy cost of three or less. And his activate main is if you have a skillless on board, you can play him out for one, which is really good. Uh, really, really good against like uh, decks like. Uh, why am I brain farting right now? AOD, because they've got Turles and their Bobbity both have barrier. Uh, typically, I'll use that on uh, the Bobbity first, because the Bobbity isn't searchable by any of the cards in the deck except for the Hatchiac. So if they don't have the Hatchiac, then uh, it really, really slows down AOD. And then we're playing three copies of Trunks' Unbelievable Might. He's a dual attack blocker. He can bottom deck a seven or less. Doesn't ignore barrier. But uh, when you play him out for two, you actually return a skill list to your hand instead of leaving it on the board, which actually comes in really handy sometimes. Especially because, like, in order to play your big boss card, you need a skill list on the board to be able to play it out for cheap. Otherwise, you're paying 10 energy for it. And that's just ridiculous for anybody. We're running for God Ceiling because it's blue and we run unison. So, I mean, no reason not to run them. And then we're running two copies of Baby Golden Avenger for obviously for the counter counter ability. Um, you don't really get to proc it that often in this deck, but when you do, um, it, it is nice to be able to do it. And then we are running two copies of Son Goku Miraculous Transformation, just because of his Deadly Defender ability. And he is a uh, 20k triple strike uh, deflect blocker, so. I mean, not block or barrier. So it's just, he's just all around good. And then one of our secondary uh, win cons <clears throat> is we're running one copy of Ultra Instinct Science on Goku because he can EX evolve on top of uh, Miraculous Transformation. And when you EX evolve for, you pay to pitch a blue card from your hand. And then uh, he's a triple striker that returns your opponent's entire board to their hand, and then after that, it uh, your when that card's in com uh, in combat, your opponent can't combo. So you swing with him with enough energy to pay for uh, yeah, you swing with him with enough energy to pay for Golden Avenger, and then they try and counter, and you counter counter, and then. If they're at three or less life, they're dead because that's a 35 triple strike. That's, there's nothing really that they can do about that. I mean, you can use the Realm of the Gods cards, but uh, a lot of the times that's still not enough because I also can combo up here. And then the boss card of the deck is two Astonishing Strikes, Super Saiyan 2, Saiyan Gohans. Uh, you can play them out for four, as long as you have a Skillless on board, and then when you play him, you pick the Skillless, and then put that Skillless into your energy. He has Deflect, and then 30k Triple Strike, 
and if uh, activate main, if you pop an energy once per turn, you can restand him. So essentially, it gives him dual attack. But it uh, also, when you do that, it's another uh, board wipe. It, this one doesn't, however, ignore barrier like the Goku does. The Goku ignores barrier because he doesn't say to choose the cards. This one says you have to choose the card, so it it doesn't ignore barrier like the Goku does. And then we're running for Sensu Bean because it's blue and Sensu Bean. We're running three of the Beerus Destroys. Um, it's not super necessary, but it does come in really helpful, especially uh, earlier game if you're trying to remove some of those uh, bigger bodies off the board that your opponent may be able to establish. Um, and then we're running four copies of Dimension Magic because it's blue and it's Dimension Magic and then if anybody was wondering SCR Hatchiak I mean it's pretty much a no-brainer in this deck because everything else is so gas that it uh, my defense just needs to be ready to just stop it but that's the deck profile. Um, if you like it, go ahead and leave a comment. Um, I'm sure you noticed that there's no Overrealm and no Champa, and that's just because I don't ever want to ramp those cards. With the, with the Leader's ability and Zeno's ability, I could pick them up really easily, but uh, I don't want to have to worry about having to do that. And I feel like this, uh, this build is just much more consistent. But if you like it, smash that like button, hit subscribe, uh, stay tuned for more content, and stay nerdy.